This is Beyond the Weekend, a podcast of Cornerstone Church, where we dig into the things we didn't have time for on Sunday. Welcome to BTW. Welcome to this week's episode of Beyond the Weekend. I'm Mandy Fowler, the Director of Spiritual Formation at Cornerstone. And this week, my guest is Ronnie Castra. Welcome, Ronnie. Yeah, thank you so much. Ronnie is our Director of Support Groups and Counseling. And tell us a little bit about what you oversee at Cornerstone, Ronnie. Yeah, um, we uh, we offer support groups, which are peer-led, which means people who have walked through some hard things um, that uh, we meet kind of throughout the year and the support groups are there just to walk alongside people that Mm -hmm. have been through divorce or grief or looking for boundaries Mm -hmm. or there's just a whole myriad of things. And um, so, yeah, so those are our support groups. And then uh, we also have a network of counseling, um, licensed counselors that we work with. Yeah. And um, basically we get calls, I get calls quite often. Um, uh, about people hurting, about marriages that are hurting, um, about kids that are, you know, having anxiety or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes uh, with the adults, a Stephen minister may be a great fit, and yeah. that's part of what I do. Um, otherwise, they may be to the place where they are looking for counseling. Yeah. And so this network of counselors that we built um, kind of give us a fast pass and mm-hmm. where I can connect people with with one of them that may be a good fit, depending if they're dealing with addictions, mm-hmm. um, yeah, depression, anxiety, and we get them, yeah, we get them the help that they, they need. That's um, great. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I love that Cornerstone is such a... Um, we have such a support around mental health and that we do believe, obviously we do believe in the power of prayer, which we're going to talk about shortly yeah. and God's healing and, and all of that. But we also believe that we, we can all use all the help we can get. So sometimes that looks like getting into community with other people who've been through just what you're going through. And sometimes that looks like getting a profession, someone professionally trained, you know, to help walk you through things that are more serious that, you know, uh, Thankfully, we have many gifted people that God has brought brought to oh, us. For to, sure. Yeah. And I think it's so important that when we talk about body, spirit, mind, mm-hmm. and wholeness, that um, I've even taken mind as mm-hmm. our mental wellness. Yeah. It's not just knowledge. It's not mm-hmm. just education, but that God sees us as a whole person. Mm-hmm. And when we live in a day and age of isolation and social media that makes us feel like we have friends when it's not real relationships, yeah. that... Um, yeah, understanding that and the, that there's no shame coming to church and having those those issues. Right. That, that church truly should be a place where we can walk in and be our true authentic self mm-hmm. and that we are loved in that. And when we need support and help, regardless of where we're at, um, that the church can supply that. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Well, let's move into, so we just finished week six of uh, our Sermon on the Mount series, Redefined, and and this week was, once again, <laughs> lots, to, <laughs> lots to get into, as every right. week has been. Yep. And loving this series, by the way. That's great. Yeah. Really, really I'm so glad. Yeah. it's It's been um, very rewarding and very challenging. You know, yeah. it's just a, yep, absolutely. a lot to unpack. It probably could be... Uh, several months instead of the week, you know, 11 weeks, I think we're doing, um, but doing our best in the time we have. And this week was an, a good example of one of those that probably could have been a couple sermons and it was mm-hmm. one, but yeah, so there's right. a whole a sermon lot. series on the Lord's <laughs> yeah, uh, prayer yeah. is not so uncommon. Right. Well, um, I had to, yeah, I had to laugh. I can't remember if I shared this last week, so apologies if I did, but I had to laugh because we've been, I've mentioned before, we've been using a lot of the Bible project podcast mm, okay. series on Sermon on the Mount. It's been very helpful to the teaching team as we've been writing this and kind of they've been keeping pace like a little ahead of us, but then they got to the Lord's Prayer or they got to this chapter six. They talked about the hypocrisy, the pagan, you know, they talked mm-hmm. about those things. And they said, and now we're going to spend the next five weeks on the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> like, no. So I didn't have those. I didn't have access to those for this. Maybe in the future. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to come, we'll have to circle back on it, but there is so much to talk about. First, I wanted to talk about um, just kind of the Lord's prayer in general, because that's something that we have. If you grew up in church, Mm -hmm. you have some kind of relationship, no matter what tradition that was. So Catholic, Protestant, 
Orthodox, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, yeah. non denominational Baptist, whatever it was, you have some kind of relationship with the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. What was yours like? Yeah. You know, growing up, um, I would say it's very traditional. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the thys, or yeah, thys, Thy, thous, thine, thine, yep. yeah. Um, Hollywood. Uh, yep. Yep. A lot of things that I probably didn't totally understand. Mm-hmm. They were just big words that I figured God, um, Deserved. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even I think though that's I... a common feeling. Yeah. Yeah. That it should yep. be um, proper. Yeah. Yeah. Proper. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And I find it very interesting as we were um, kind of talking earlier about how, um, for whatever reason, the King James was handed down to us and that stuck, but other right. things haven't. <laughs> Right. When you read the NIV or you, yeah, yeah it just yeah. is, it, I never had thought of that before. That was right. a really interesting insight. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny because, yeah, commonly now, I mean, I think at one point and obviously in church history, King James was probably the most common. And nowadays, you know, we have so, access to so many Bible translations. Right. We typically use the NIV or the NLT here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're definitely not going to hear King James any other time. Right, right. Um, and then in, in for most people's personal Bible reading and whatnot, I think most of us are not reading the King James. Yeah, no, no, not this girl. <laughs> um, so it is kind of funny that like then we, but then for this, we'll snap into it who is. art in heaven. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's a, it's a little funny. So did you grow up saying it like every week or were there certain times? How often were you saying yeah. it? Yeah, no, that was very typical for every Sunday. Okay. We did it. Yeah. Um, it's not an uncommon way uh, growing up. Mm-hmm. And even now at the end of a meal, that's something which is is actually kind of cool. We do that in community, right? Mm-hmm. Even with our family. Mm-hmm. So it is something that has tied us together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say in both those ways, but I, I don't know if we carried on that tradition mm. with our kids. Mm-hmm. Well, in my family... Um, so I don't really remember growing up. So I, I I was trying to think. I don't think we said it every week. I know at some point my parents like to say it on Sundays at dinner, before dinner. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't remember when that happened. And it's kind of funny. Uh, I didn't want to say this in the service because my parents were there. <laughs> but no, it's nothing bad. It's just kind of sure. funny. My uh, Recently, like I think maybe just last year, I was with my parents on a Sunday for dinner. And we were saying the Lord's Prayer together. And my mom said afterwards, why, why were you saying it so fast? My dad, he was like, I don't want, I didn't want to forget the words. And that can happen to us, you know, yeah. like that can, with something you memorize like that, you know, you kind of just got to click into memorization mode. You got to, yeah. you know, and so that was what I was trying to kind of get to in the message was that that can be, that's how it can become a rut because we aren't engaging with the words anymore. Absolutely. We're just rattling them off. Yeah. Yep. Um, and even sitting in a church service, if um, you learn the translation of forgive us our trespasses, as right. we trespass against someone else. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that wasn't my tradition, but that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. And, but you're so kind of thrown S's. off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Funny. I always pause a little bit. If I'm with uh-huh. people that I don't know what word they say there, I always like hang back and wait to see what they say. Sins, debts, or trespasses. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. But that not that funny, though, as we're trying to pray? Yeah, right. We're hesitating. We want to make sure we're using the right word. <laughs> and looking at the screen is what, you yeah, know, it yeah. just is a, yeah, it is it's an interesting funny, thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and it's funny too, because I think, I mean, I think the impulse is good, right? Mm-hmm. To That we believe that this is the prayer that Jesus asked us to pray. And so the impulse to include it wherever we can yeah. is a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we've done some damage because it has lost its meaning. You know, we stop yeah. paying attention to what it's saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it can almost become a little bit of a... Um, I almost want to say like a superstition or like a, you know, like a protection. Like, oh, if I'm saying oh, this. Yeah, yeah, like, I can see that. The words are good enough. You know, yeah. it's kind of like, well, I said it, you know, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, so I think it's important that we slow down and start paying attention a little bit to what we're actually saying. No, absolutely. <laughs> Which is why I think like doing the modern language, I think, will help. Because right now it feels almost like a little detached you know, yeah. using the King James language because the thy, thy and thine, it's like, who are we even talking to? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Well, and the whole um, the whole piece that I didn't have, I, I read the messages a week ahead because we do the prayer text oh, right. prompts. Mm-hmm. 
And I had no idea that that last sentence, for thine is the kingdom, oh, the yeah. power, and the glory forever, that that was not... I mean, I read scripture often. I grew up, you know, I grew up on scripture. Yeah, yeah. And I just... I don't know how I ever missed that that was right. not well, part of... Well, we tend to read it into that. We, we probably don't even notice because we're so used to it being there. We just assume it is. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. So um, the the earliest manuscripts we can find in Matthew do not have that line. Mm-hmm. So for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And some traditions add and an extra ever there, <laughs> forever oh. and ever. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, but the place that that comes from, as far as we can tell, there was a document called the Didache okay. that was written at the latest 150, we think, but probably within the first century. And it's kind of, it's it's a little bit all over the place. It's quoting a lot from Matthew. It gives some instructions for worship and stuff. And we find that line there. Mm-hmm. And so we think, I mean, I think the impression is that as Chris, early Christians were using this in their worship, mm-hmm. you know, it's a little abrupt to just say, and lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Yeah, right. You know, so uh-huh. I think that there is some sort of, you know, this is like a liturgical element, a way of like having an ending oh, for the prayer. I sure. don't know. Mm-hmm. We don't know exactly why. Um, but they were already using it by then. Okay. So by like 150 at the latest, that was the Christian practice to say okay. that last line. And they even instruct to say the prayer three times a day. Oh, right. There yeah. in that same document. So it's very interesting. I think it's appropriate. It makes sense to me. It oh, fits, sure. you know, it's like a good concluding reminder for us. You yeah, know, like, right, right. You yeah, know, like yep. a sign off. <laughs> yeah, totally. And it puts God in his rightful place again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good, yeah, it's a wor- worshipful way to end it. So mm-hmm. um, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with, because that's been part of the Christian tradition now for yeah. so long. Yep. Well, uh, and that we start w- with our father and the relationship side, right? First, I mean, we we get a posture, of, right, um, of intimacy and yeah. relationship, and then we end in the God glory side, right? In the holiness, in the power, right? You and know, forever, and forever. You know, I think mm-hmm. that's a good, yeah. Just as from the human perspective, like a good reminder, like kind of puts everything in perspective, puts everything kind of in its place as a way to end it. Uh, but yeah, it is a funny, um, funny thing to notice. Well, and we were talking a little bit beforehand. If you look at the Luke version mm-hmm. uh, of the prayer, it's even shorter. It definitely doesn't have that line in it, and it also doesn't have a lot else either. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. The end. <laughs> right. Well, we kind of laugh that that's if you're really hungry yeah, before yeah, dinner. Yeah, that's the short version you can do if you're like, guys, I'm starving. Right. Um, so it is very interesting. And in such a contrast with, you know, Jesus ex- doing all this explanation of like what not to do. Mm-hmm. Of not... Of not going out with a motive of being seen, not do not praying with a motive of being seen, and not praying these long elaborate prayers like you have to build this case, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. um, or convince God of why yeah. He should <laughs> answer your prayer. Yeah, but no, that, totally. It's just yeah. a simple, short. Of course, we had to make it longer, yeah. but, <laughs> but a, short, a short. You know, I think it's like there's so much permission there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and like, like we shared yesterday, this isn't to say, I think, I think it has value both ways as a prayer that we memorize, a prayer that we use in worship Mm -hmm. and say verbatim. Mm -hmm. Um, but then also as a way to think about how, how we pray. Yeah, no, totally. Well, and even, um, I mean, kind of going into that prayer again, Mm -hmm. that whole concept of lead us not into temptation. Right. And I I have to say it really struck um, a heart chord with me to turn that into lead us away from temptation. Right. That um, that I, I, not that I struggled, but it's one of those things I've always chewed on that why is God leading us into temptation? Yeah. That's not the God that I know. Um, but away from it's it is a um, it's just a whole different mindset. Yeah, I I appreciate that. Now that you're saying that, like, yeah, I think for me, as I think about how many, however many times I've said this prayer in my mm-hmm. lifetime, that was always kind of a clunk. Yeah, to me right. too. Like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. You know, because that's not been my experience. You know, we don't believe that God 
tempts us. Right. And right. so and sets us up for failure. Right. Right. <laughs> it just is not, yeah, like, it's not who God is. Yeah. I preached at Heritage Hill yesterday and I said, you know, like 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 God is in the business of leading us into temptation to like ask him not yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. That right. isn't um so I think that's set up some that's an interesting like um side effect of that language. You know, that's why, you know, words are tremendously important. And that's yeah. why I'm always a big advocate for, you know, finding the Bible translation that clicks with you, mm-hmm. that you can, you know, read most easily and understand what, what is being said, mm-hmm. because that's a, a great illustration of why, you know, if that yeah. doesn't make any sense, you know, and that might make you think something about God that's not true. Absolutely. You no, know, absolutely. And so um, we want to be really cautious about that and not <laughs> not yeah. perpetuate. <laughs> no, totally. Well, and I was using it as an example, and it's kind of a silly example, but man, if I'm trying to cut out sugar yeah. or carbs or whatever it is, I would love to think that because I'm thinking that through, praying mm-hmm. that God help me with this, mm-hmm. that God just takes it from my mind. Mm. Not just as go to the gas station and see how strong you are. <laughs> <laughs> and like a cake shows up at your front door. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. And I mean, you just have to try and resist. Right. Yeah. Well, that goes to the power of the Holy Spirit. It goes to the power of prayer mm-hmm. um, that, you know, it's it that God can take those thoughts away. Right. And so it's just, uh, yeah, I just, that was a very powerful point that yeah. was made yesterday. Well, and something I read um, also suggested that's to uh, just another way of underscoring our dependence on God. So it's mm. it's not praying like make me strong enough to resist, right. you know, give me the strength to turn away. You know, it's talking about depending on God. You know, this kind of just realization of our own weakness and need for Him. Absolutely, um, mm. which I think is kind of all through the prayer. If you think about you know this idea of like asking for daily bread. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's not about, you know, give me enough so that I don't have to worry or struggle for the yeah. next 50 years. Right, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, no, totally. Well, and like you said, in our culture, um, yeah, the it, it looks very different about daily bread. Yeah. Um, enough bread for today. I love the term yeah, on that yeah, too. Yeah. Um, and, be, and it kind of gave me a spirit of gratefulness. mm that I have bread for today. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it kind of reduces our, our vision, I think, if we're not praying for things, because we we are a culture that's, I think, very concerned about the future mm-hmm. in a way that maybe other times sure. in history they weren't because mm-hmm. it was like they're just surviving, you yeah, know, yep. like a day mm-hmm. each day. Um, and we are going to get to that next week. We get into the passage about um, worry oh. and, uh, you know, can you add a day to your life by worrying? Um, so that'll be an interesting topic. But uh, mm. but um, by kind of, I think God just knows humans so well. And there's such a care there of like knowing that we tend to, you know, worry about things that aren't, aren't today's business. Basically. Yeah, right. No, totally. Yeah, right. <laughs> and trying to get us to think out, you know, trying to get us to snap out of that a little bit and just say like, what about today? Yeah. Yep. Which oh, is good. countercultural and counter human, probably. Yeah, no, <laughs> it is. Right. Right. <laughs> but uh but yeah, but I don't think we have to feel bad about, you know, we can take it to places of so we don't need to feel bad that we we have food. Oh right. You know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I do think it's good for us yeah, to be to be mindful of those who don't because mm-hmm. there are plenty of people, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Who don't? Well, I think of our whole hand-to-hand program. Oh, right. I mean, those are kids on the weekend um, right? that, that are um, food insecure. Yeah. And um, to think that uh, they can't go to the fridge or the cupboard right. um, and just see, um, you know, deli meat and a, a bread right. <laughs> sitting right. there for them, yeah. Yeah. that's a real truth for them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just an important ministry to remember. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good good point. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't have much time left, but um, just finally just wanted to talk about the whole idea of like rut versus rhythm. Mm. Um, now, I know you mentioned briefly like the prayer texting 
Let's talk oh. about that briefly in case people don't know about yeah, that. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yep. What we do um, is one of another piece of my job is the prayer path or prayer events mm-hmm. and then community prayer texting. Mm-hmm. And so basically what that is, is I, I read the message and I try to understand where the, the heart of it is, the teaching team, what they're coming from, really read the scripture. And the goal is that we are praying in unity together mm-hmm. um, as a church from what we learned um, on a, on the Sunday that there's a message guide and that it just sets our hearts right, mm. that it um, it gets us, um, and people will even forward those on to other individuals and just, um, they all begin with um, a characteristic of God, mm. generous God, God of truth. Mm. Um, and it just gives God his, um, for me, it sets the tone for where the prayer is going. Mm. And um, to pull that from the message is, um, yeah, it's really, it's kind of an honor to be able to do that and cool. um, kind of a humbling thing too. I get yeah. a little nervous sometimes. <laughs> sure. Well, I tell you, the, the day re-type. we stop being nervous about all of this is probably the day we should step away because, yeah, you know, there's, yeah, a, lot, there's yeah. a lot, we're doing, we're doing important stuff for people and yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can find it right by the message guide. There's a phone number or a text um, number that you can uh, yeah. put in and then it's just hashtag good life right now to, oh, great. Um, for, yeah, for the whole blessed. That's great. <laughs> well, and I think that's a good illustration of uh, a way of turning prayer into a rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. No, absolutely. It's um, Mondays and Thursdays right. is um, when it comes out. That's great. So, yeah. So it's not even every single day, guys. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> Just twice a week. Oh, I love it. Um, that's great. Yeah. Well, and then we also utilize um, that prayer. We tried it. We're trying really hard to do like integrate more across our all of our teams and yeah. um, cross cross paths. Yeah, no, <laughs> better. for sure. Not and so, silos. yeah, we use, mm-hmm. yeah, so we use um, one of your prayers in the message discussion guide as, as well. Yeah, I appreciate um, that. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're trying to uh, provide tools and help people mm-hmm. um, kind of connect the dots when it comes to Sunday message and the rest of their week. Absolutely. Helping to think through more of what we talked about. So it's not just like a flash in the pan, like, oh, that was good. And then the next one, you know? Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. It's, um, well, and the prayer path kind of gives another opportunity too. Oh, right. There, um, it's behind 84th Street. It's less than a mile. Mm-hmm. And um, there's prayer prompts by all the different benches. Mm. Um, whether it's forgive and scripture with yeah. it, and it's just kind of a peaceful way to, um, uh, yeah, to to take time and more of that rhythm, yeah, than rut and shaking it up a little right, bit. Right, right. <laughs> That's a great suggestion. If you feel, you know, if you feel like you've been in a rut a little bit mm-hmm. with faith and talking to God and you know anywhere else in your spiritual life. Come to the prayer path, especially if you've only if you go to one of the other campuses. Yeah, make a little jaunt to 84th Street. It's a little tough right now because of all the construction. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you can make it. <laughs> you we can make pray it through it. Yeah, you can make it. Come to the prayer path and spend a little time just outside in beautiful nature and walk around and pray. That's yeah. a great suggestion, and yeah. that would be my suggestion for anybody. You know, if you're mm-hmm. feeling like you're in a rut, try something different. Change yeah, things up a little bit. For sure. Read a different translation of the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Totally. And every station too is. Being being kept up by somebody who um, usually it's in memorial mm. or they, um, yeah, the benches have, have names on them. And that's so cool. it's, uh, and there's actually a memorial garden that's, yeah. that's there. And yeah. so it just is, um, people really care and are, are walking through that um, each station in prayer. That's great. For the people who will be there. So even mm. being prayed for in that way, it's just, a, yeah, the power of prayer. Um, we really lived it out last year too when our son was ill and it's just, it's mm. so powerful and it's so real and um, yeah, it just, prayer yeah. is so important part of our discipline in, right. in our in our faith. Well, thanks for everything that you do to help mm. uh, Cornerstone with that area. It's an honor. Yeah, thanks. All right. Well, um, unfortunately we're out of time, but please keep tuning in. Please keep uh, we we offer all these things for you, yeah, right, you know. Right, so right, please yeah. uh, please take advantage of them. If you have any questions, of course, you can email either one of us. But yep. uh, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Great.